Hi, my name is Michaela, I'm the coordinator for the Life Rooms Boot Up. Today I'm joined with Louise Nixon, Head of Personal Development for UB College, and we are chatting with our inspirational male, Christian Blackhawk. Christian, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to have you on board. Um, people like yourself offer open inspiration to others. So I'm going to start the um, interview and I'll let Louise take over. Yeah, go for it. Thank you so much again on behalf of Hugo College for doing this as well. So just as an easy question to start with, who is Christine Blackwell? Um, just a uh, just regular guy who has been in the fitness industry for a long time over 20 years now and then probably about 15 years ago I started working with one of the local boxers, Paul Smith mm -hmm. um, and from there it kind of snowballed and I uh, happened to get, get lucky and got introduced to Tyson Fury six years ago and then that's the bit my life changed completely and it just, just snowballed from there so I'm just, uh, I'm originally from Kent, originally from down south. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, I am, I'm, I'm, I'm not technically a company, but, uh, okay. yeah, there we go. Um, but I moved up when I was quite young, I moved up when I was still in primary school. Um, and then I've been living in and around the Liverpool area the rest of my life, so yeah, local life. So when you said you got into fitness, what element of fitness was it? Was it PT training yeah. or boxing? Or yeah, um, like, like even with what I do with, I work with obviously loads of boxers, but it's not boxing that I do with them. It's obviously all your strength conditioning. It's all the other stuff basically other than, other than boxing. And that's that's my background. That's what I've, I've always done. I've always been into particularly strength training, weight training, but also conditioning training, just more sort of the fitness stuff. But yeah, um, I used to work in uh, Top Fitness down the road. I uh, worked there from when it opened for like, God, I used to go, didn't yeah, yeah, I? Yeah. Yeah. Um, for like, Nearly twenty years until I um, until I started hearing you a couple of years ago. Amazing. So, what was your dream when you were a young boy? Then, what was I want? I actually, when I was very young, wanted to be a footballer. Like a lot, a lot of people, I was very into football. And then, once I got to a certain age, I actually wanted to do what I'm doing now. I wanted to do fitness and PT. I didn't know exactly what, but I went to university and did a sports science degree, thinking of getting into the fitness industry in some way, shape, or form. Um, what I'm doing now pretty much supersedes what I thought I'd ever do. So yeah, I've I've been very lucky. That is, isn't it? To, yeah. to, to you know, cause we all like I think I wanted to be a nurse. I ended up a hairdresser, so it certainly <laughs> didn't align with what I wanted to do. So I wanted to fill that. Um, so how did you get where you are today? So it was how did that kind of well happen for you? As I, as, I, as I mentioned just then, uh, I started working with. Um, just just through coming to talk fitness there, one of the local boxers, Paul Smith, but at the time he was he had a, a British title fight coming up and I was quite friendly with him, so he, he said, you know, it was his idea to do a bit of training. Um, and I just got him got him ready for that fight, he won that fight, became British champion and then he's got obviously he's very famous you know, family of boxers. Um, um Paul's the oldest, uh, then Steve and then Lee and then uh, Cam Smith. All have had a lot of title fights, two of them have been world champions, and I've worked with all of them for, for, for many years. I've only sort of not been working with them as much in the last few years because of the commitments with, with Tyson. And I got, got very lucky with that one, really. That was, um, again, somebody who I knew, who happened to know Tyson, who, who um, runs a um, supplement company called Applied Nutrition. It's actually a local success story. Their business has gone through the roof from literally nothing to a massive multinational com uh, company. And uh, he was sponsoring Tyson early in his career. And Tyson wanted to train for his first world title fight in 2015 away from Manchester. And so Thomas had come over to Liverpool. And we actually trained in the Northern Boston State uh, in a unit in there. And we literally um, stayed in a caravan in, in um, Thomas's garden and what and we trained like that for a world title fight and then from there I've obviously stayed working with Tyson ever since. Do you think there's a lot to be said for when you are focused, need to be focused on something whether it's sport or not? It's so valuable to take yourself away from the every day or what would be deemed as your every day? See my my yeah, my normal every day is, is training just you know, normal people and um, for the usual goals, whether it be fitness or events that have got coming up or to lose weight or to get healthy. So that's my, you know, my, that was my, you know, major part of my job, even only a few years ago. Um, and then obviously it's working with sportsmen was, was a little bit more niche, a little bit more specialised, but 
that's what obviously I, I really enjoyed doing. So uh, able to sort of build a bit of a profile of working with these guys and then I work with more and more and more now and sort of split my time among sort of, I still work with people, everyday people, which I like doing. And then I do a lot of work with obviously elite athletes or even a few young up and coming elite athletes. And I have my own gym now, so it's it's my sort of role has sort of changed quite a bit and I sort of a bit more diversified in what I do. Thank you. Uh, what experiences have you had about around mental health? Mainly, I'd say, um, obviously, Tyson. That's the you know, I mean, that's, in fact, it, it, training with Tyson and sort of what he's been through, and it's obviously well documented. Everyone knows he, he, had, a, he, had, a, he, had, a, he had a breakdown in 2016. Uh, he won his world title fight in 2015. I always say this to him um, we were training for that fight, and I asked him, right, when you win the world title, what are you going to do? And he said, I'll be miserable. He said, uh, he said I'll be depressed. And I took it as an off, off the cuff comment at the time, um, but he knew he knew that once he'd achieved that goal, it wasn't going to be what he thought it was yeah, going to be. Yeah. And this is exactly that. And then when we were training for the rematch, he had to he had a rematch clause. He had to fight the guy again. Um, he had a full breakdown. We were, I was I was turning up the training with him every day, not knowing what was going to get. One day he'd be high and he'd be low, and he was in a really bad way, and it went worse and worse from there. And so he literally just quit. And then he had like about 18 months where he did, did everything bad. Everything you could do to your body in a bad way. He piled weight on, you know, too much drink, he even drug use, you know, he, he, he did everything. Everything he was bad. He was, he was, you know, he'd tell the story of where he was driving uh, driving his car extremely fast and he wanted he just wanted pressure. And then it all and he said it just it, it scared him and he um, bought his family. And from that point onwards he, he decided you know, it was a long process, but he gradually got himself back to towards where he is today. Within that process that you were involved as an element that you felt that you, you had a key way of being able to help him through that? What, what it, I mean, he, he, he said what, the, the key to his mental health on, on managing his exercise. He loves exercise. Previously, when he was you know, a professional athlete, that he would he would fight and do nothing. And then gets closer to closer, he gets to fight and then he trains for a fight. So he'd just be doing that with exercise all the time on and off and his relationship with exercise wasn't even that great. Um, from the point of him being diagnosed, diagnosed and starting his comeback, and he was, it was all about weight loss to start with because he had nine stone to lose before he could even realistically fight. And he'd done that all through that process, just consistently training. And there was you know, the endorphins you get from exercise. Um, yeah, it's obviously well documented, everybody knows the benefits of that. And that was probably the key crucial thing. And even now, even now, he's, he's you know, he, he says, you know, you've always got mental health, it's never gonna just like suddenly go away. And he still trains every day. He does something every day. Even if he's injured, he'll do something every day just, just to keep keep himself active and um, get some endorphins. And it is, it is about managing his mental state as much as anything. Thank you so much, thank you. Okay, so do you find it encouraging that they're <coughs> already a professional sportsman like Tyson to come forward with mental health um, I think it's, it, it started around that time when Tyson came out because he was basically the uh, your, your, your alpha male, the heavyweight champion of the world, you know, the guy that shouldn't have any mental health problems. And everyone, I mean, I get messaged every day. He gets obviously a million times more than me. And it's, and it's always, you know, if, if he can admit to having issues, if he can come out and be open about his own problems, then there's no reason anyone anyone can't say and you see a lot more sports are coming out now and it's a way of um, I think if you, if you if you talk about it and you express it that's it's a way of acknowledging it and starting the process of, of, it's of improve, yeah, making, yeah. Making, making improvements definitely mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, as it is inspirational men can stay who's inspired you throughout your life it's hard because I, I, I don't have a question of what it is it's, you know I've, I've had like I had my own sporting idols and stuff like that, and, and even from like I always wanted to get into sort of weight training and stuff like that. People, even people like Arnold Schwarzenegger, mm -hmm. I actually read his biography and what was inspired by him wasn't he made his money before he acted, before he went into bodybuilding. Really? He, the, yeah, he, he made his money from construction and what any, any money he made very early in his career as bodybuilder, he, he made himself a multi millionaire before he even went into acting. Mm -hmm. It was just yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, he was just a proper like go getter. You know, you think he turned, he started as a little boy in Austria and ended up 
governor of, of California. It's ridiculous, you know. Yeah, he was one of my inspirations, but there was um, yeah, a, lot of, <coughs> a lot of sportsmen um, have inspired me. And and even you know, more recently, people like Tyson. He's, he's, Tyson's the yeah. most inspiration in my life. When you watch when you watch him go through fights and you think the, the courage he has as a man, um, there's no man on the planet that's got that level of courage that he's got. He he, he just in his head he cannot be beaten. Yeah. And you know, he comes out with quotes and people go, Yeah, yeah, but it's true. You should behind the scenes and the cameras off, he's not gonna get beaten. Even when he's put down on the floor and you think, how does he get up and he gets up? It's just mind blowing. None of us all can understand it. He just has some kind of that none of us have. So he's it's probably my, my inspiration in terms of that. That's lovely. Mm -hmm. So what would you say is the key ingredients to achieving your goals? Um, consistency. Definitely. It's boring. I always say the most boring word is the most important consistency because everyone wants a magic formula, don't they? Whether it be, you know, to, to, you know, to lift the heaviest weight, even on weight loss, people always think, you know, I want a tablet or a, yeah. or a magic diet. It's not, it's just consistently eating correctly and you know, having a calorie deficit consistently. Um, everything, with, everything if, you're, if you're consistent with whatever your, your goal is, you will get a lot closer or achieve it by being consistent. If you're inconsistent, you're never, ever going to get it. Thank you. So what's next for Christian Blackwell? Well, um, obviously, Ty just come back from America, Tyson had his last fight. That was obviously a very successful fight again. Um, Wait and see what happens with him. I'm, I, I see him really because I'm actually using his gym at the moment to train in another heavyweight, Joseph Parker. He's got a big fight on the 18th of December. In I think Manchester. Fun, I yeah, fun. Joseph's probably the nicest guy you've ever met in your life. He's the nicest guy in boxing. He's just like, if he was in here now, everyone would be getting hugs and kisses. He's oh. so nice. He's a really, really good guy. But he's got a big fight against uh, Derek Chidora in, in mm -hmm. Manchester. So that's, that's what we're doing now, working for that. Um, another sort of teammate of Tyson's eyes at the moment. So only a featherweight, so he's a nine stone fighter. He fights on the Friday, the 3rd of December, the very soon, and that's for a, a final eliminator for a world title fight, and that's my one of them, so I've got that coming up. And then apart from just looking forward to Christmas and enjoying myself a little bit. Same, same. So the last question, Kristen. If you could send a message to those who are struggling with their own mental health, mm -hmm. or trying to support others who fear as well as they be? One day at a time. Trying to trying to look too far into the future, it's 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 on un, unattainable when it's weeks and weeks and weeks away. If you just think about what you can do now in the moment today, and to just live each day, day by day, yeah. try and do the little things that work. Then the key things I think are we talk about consistency. It's like routine. Routine breeds consistency. If you have a little routine in your life, even if it's just getting up, having coffee, um, you get up at the same time every day, have a coffee, go for a walk, take the kids to school, whatever it is you do. Get that routine going. If you, if you sit around and just you know, wait to have inspiration to do something, you end up sitting around doing nothing all day. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, definitely. Christian, thank you so, so much for joining us yourself and Louise today. Thank really, you. Really appreciate it. That was good fun. Thanks very much. Thank you.